Hi everyone and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be presenting Working with Constraints in AutoCAD 2017. My name is Ashley and joining me today are my colleagues Dave, our presenter, and Victoria, who's going to be helping to answer some of your questions. We'd like to thank everyone for taking some time out of their day to be here. We're very happy to have you and hope that you learn something from this webinar. Um, so before we get started, we're just going to run a few polls here. Um, the first one that we have is, um, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? If you could help us out and let us know. So that was pretty quick. Most of you have um, said no, this is not your first webinar. For a few of you it is, so that's great. Welcome. So for 94% of you, it's not your first uh, Autodesk webinar. For 6% of you, it is. So welcome back and welcome. Uh, the next poll that we have here that we're going to do is um, which AutoCAD-based application do you use? So it looks like about 40% of you are using AutoCAD, some with AutoCAD LT, about 23%. And then we have some AutoCAD verticals, MEP, AutoCAD architecture, about 18% there. And uh, AutoCAD Civil 3D or AutoCAD map, we have about 17%. So a nice mix there for today. And then the third poll that we have here is, have you ever used constraints? Yes, no, I don't know, or not on purpose. So it's pretty close here. It looks like about 34% of you um, have used constraints, about 42% of you have not, about 19% I don't know, and about 3% not on purpose. So you're in for a real treat with Dave's presentation today. So then we're going to get into a little bit about us. Dave, I can't see your screen right now. Can anyone else see your screen? Yeah, can you see it okay, Victoria? Nope, I can't see the presentation. Uh, all right, let me... All right, there we go, perfect. There we go, okay, sorry. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. So a little bit about us. Um, Dave, our presenter, is a technical support specialist based out of our Manchester office. I am also a technical support specialist based out of Boston. And Victoria is a technical support specialist as well, and she is, um, works out of the same office as Dave in Manchester. Uh, so before we get started, please feel free to leave questions in the chat window and we'll answer them as best we can. Um, this session will be recorded and links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, as well as the chat window. Uh, so some of our upcoming webinar topics include the third dimension, Materials Matter in AutoCAD 2017, and that's going to be on June 9th. Tips and Tricks, an introduction to AutoCAD MEP on June 16th. Back to Basics, an introduction to viewports and layouts in AutoCAD LT 2017. That's on June 23rd. And then Beyond the Basics, working with the Sheet Set Manager in AutoCAD 2017. And that's going to be on June 30th. You can watch past webinars anytime by visiting our Autodesk YouTube channel. You can also download the data sets from Box if you'd like to follow along. You can register for the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series by visiting our landing page. And please visit and encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and uh, share your knowledge. If you're interested to share feedback with the AutoCAD development team, we also encourage you to join our AutoCAD customer council. If you'd like to get involved, please email us at autocad.beta at autodesk.com.
and our Autodesk Knowledge Network. Um, here you can find articles, service packs, and hot fixes for AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD, as well as many other um, AutoCAD verticals. So please, please um, visit the Autodesk Knowledge Network. So now for the exciting stuff, this week's agenda. Um, Dave's going to cover geometric constraints, dimensional constraints, and working with constraints in AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Dave, who's going to be teaching you more about constraints. And uh, Dave, it's all yours. All right, thanks, Ashley. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, attending today. And uh, we, we decided to do this uh, webinar again. We actually did this initially about a year ago, but uh, for some reason the, the sound didn't come through uh, in the recording. So we're kind of replaying um, an old song here, uh, revisiting con constraints. And hopefully uh, I can give you, a, uh, especially those of you that aren't, haven't used constraints before, uh, a good overview of what they can do and uh, get you all excited about them. Uh, for those of you that uh, haven't used them on purpose, uh, I kind of show you how to get rid of constraints in the file if you uh, end up with constraints in a drawing that, uh, that you get from somebody else. And for those of you that don't know, uh, hopefully by the end of the webinar, you will know if you've used constraints or not before. So first of all, um, I want to talk about what is a constraint. And um, in the default menu uh, setup that you get inside of AutoCAD, you actually don't have access to the constraints tools. Uh, to get access to the constraints tools, and I, I think it may be actually visible in 2017 by default, but in previous versions it wasn't, um, just right-click on the, the uh, title of the um, AutoCAD screen, and it'll bring up a little right-click menu, and you go to Show Tabs, and then we pick on the Parametric, so you can see that there are a couple of tabs that aren't invisible right now. If I pick on Parametric, that's going to load up the parametric tab, and that's where we're going to get access to our constraints. So uh, what is a constraint? Basically, a constraint is a relationship between one or more objects. So um, you, there's lots of different things that you can do. Uh, it, typically in AutoCAD, right, if I like the, these lines and arcs and stuff that they have, these are all just individual elements. And if I were to move a line, Right, you see it, it just, just becomes disconnected from the geometry. By adding constraints to the model, you can start creating relationships between the different components. And there are a number of different types of constraints we can add. So uh, if I hover over these different options in the uh, ribbon, you'll see a little flyout about what each one of these things are. And the, uh, the first one is a coincident constraint. Basically, this um, will sit there and create a, a relationship between two points. So, you know, two points of a two line or ends of lines will, uh, will always be touching if you want them to. Right? There's a collinear constraint. So you can say that you want something to be in line with another object. And I'll, I'll be going through showing examples of each of these as I go through as well. There's a concentric constraint. So if you have arcs or circles, you can make one concentric to the other so that if you adjust one, the other one will automatically adjust. There is a fixed constraint. So a fixed constraint is going to anchor a point in, uh, in the current UCS. So um, you know, if you want something to always be in one spot and allow other things to move, you can use the fixed constraint. Right? There's parallel. So two objects will be parallel to one another. Uh, you get the opposite. Right? We've got perpendicular. So one line will be at a right angle to another line. You can force things to be horizontal or vertical. Oh, can be handy if you uh, always w want to have something that's flat uh, in the current UCS. There's a tangent constraint, so make sure that the edge of a circle is touching the you know a line, and you'll see how that one works. Uh, the next one's kind of an, an interesting one. It's called the smooth constraint, and it'll basically take uh, arcs or polylines or splines and make them join smoothly together. So if you have multiple arcs or splines, it'll kind of combine those together into something that looks nice and smooth, like a continuous spline. And then uh, there's a symmetrical constraint. Right? So uh, 
make sure that things are, are going to be even on either side of a, another object. And then there's an equal constraint, which I think kind of is halfway between a geometric constraint and a, a dimensional constraint. But it'll, it'll make sure that uh, two items are the same length uh, or same, have the same value. So kind of how does this all work? I'll show you a quick example here. I'm going to start off by drawing a polyline. And I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily draw it at some weird angles. And, uh, you know, if I were to pick on this, you can see it's one continuous object, but it's, it's just a, you know, a dumb polyline, if you will, right? So now I want to turn it into a smart polyline. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, and let me just make this kind of obvious so you can see that it's really what it's doing here. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, maybe I'm going to use my parallel constraints. So right now this is just an you know, a, a odd shaped polygon and if I use parallel and I select on my first object and then my uh, second side of the polyline, it's going to force these two components or the, these two edges of the polyline to be parallel with, with one another. And you'll see that um, by default I have these toolbars turned on. So so it's going to show me what the constraint is. So it's showing me that this is a parallel constraint with, with this other one. Uh, I'm going to just repeat that on the other side. <clears throat> so now I have a nice trapezoid. And uh, um, if I were to make a, any change to the geometry, right, it's going to kind of tweak the other side as well. So it, everything's maintaining the relationship there. But uh, maybe I actually want this to be a, a rectangle, and, uh, a rectangle instead of a parallelogram. Um, to do that, I, I'm just going to use the perpendicular constraint, and I'm going to select the two edges. And now we have a nice uh, rectangle, right? If things square to one another. Excuse me, I don't know if I hit the mute there, but I apologize if I didn't. Um, so, so now I have something that is uh, is being constrained in several different ways. I can change the size of the object, right? But I can't uh, change the fact that it's it's a, a, re a rectangle. It's, it's always going to be um, you know with square edges, and the and the sides are going to be parallel to one another. So um, now I want to start maybe uh, creating some relationships between the geometry over here and this one. So the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, collinear constraint. And I'm going to say that I want um, this line to be the governing line. And I want this one to be collinear with, it, with that component. Okay, so now it's uh, it's rotated the rectangle and it's aligned these two edges together. And by the way, you'll, you'll notice that when I hover over something, it'll show me if there's a relationship between two things. I don't know if it shows up really well, but it's highlighting this other box over here and it's highlighting this other line. So it'll show you that there's um, you know a relationship between these objects. Uh, we can do the same thing on the other side. Maybe I, I always want uh, this box to be the same size. Oh, actually, I want to do something else before I do that. Um, so that, that kind of shows you one other thing that about constraints is uh, um, sometimes you get results that you don't expect if you don't have enough constraints or if you have too many. <laughs> so uh, keep keep that in mind. Um, so before I uh, do this, you know, make this other edge collinear with this one, uh, I want to go back and talk a little bit more about what I was talking about earlier as far as, you know, the relationships of geometry. You'll see I can do anything I want with this line right now. Even though I didn't add constraints to the uh, geometry that's here, uh, it's actually possible to go ahead and add constraints at any point to the model. Um, and one of the nice way th ways to do this is using this auto constraint tool. Uh, before I use that, I want to go into my settings. So in the geometric tab panel here, I'm going to select this little arrow and that will open up my settings tab. And there's a tab here called Auto Constraint. And uh, in Auto Constraint, you can see all the different constraints that you can add. Um, if you want to get rid of one, you can, right? I can say maybe I don't care about horizontal and vertical, so I can just turn those off. And maybe uh, things like uh, you know something that's parallel, I want to have a real high priority. I can actually move it up. So you can you can set which constraints you want and which ones will be applied with the strongest priority as you're uh, applying them to existing geometry. 
there's also the ability to uh, add constraints even if there's a, a slight gap. So you can tell it how big of a gap you want and how big of an angle will be acceptable and it'll still apply constraints to the geometry. Uh, if you just you know done playing with it and you want to kind of put it back to the default settings, then you can hit reset and it'll just will put things back in the same order and uh, all the defaults will be put back in place. So uh, we'll come back to this constraints dialog in a little bit, but uh, just so you can see kind of what's going to happen there. So I'm going to go ahead and use the auto constrain tool, and I'm going to select the uh, geometry here in my model, grab everything, and when I do that, you'll see that it just created a whole bunch of constraints. And there's two ways to tell if something has a constraint. One is the, the toolbar, the other is these little uh, you know dots that show up where there's coincident constraints. So um, you know, none of these things will plot, don't worry about that, um, but that's a, a good way to, to be able to tell if there is a constraint assigned. Um, you can do things like you know, move these toolbars if they're, uh, if they're in the way. Uh, if you want to get, if you want to see what something is uh, associated with, um, again you can hover over the constraint and you can see that this line is actually being parallel to this other line just by hovering over that constraint. Uh, it's perpendicular to this other line over here. So it, it's doing all kinds of different things and if you wanted to get rid of a particular constraint, maybe uh, I don't want the perpendicular one, if you right click you can go ahead and delete that constraint. So um, if you, you know, if you're getting things that are you know, too constrained, you can go ahead and get rid of one and it'll, uh, it'll be removed from the model. So now that I have some more constraints assigned, uh, I'll go back and I'm going to use my align thing again. And now when I select this, right, you'll see that the, uh, the box is maintaining the same uh, shape as the other, as the main geometry does, right? And go ahead and scrunch this up. Uh, but we, we can have some more fun. Um, maybe I want this line and this line of this profile to always be the same. So I can just use equal and I can say this line and this line needs to be the same. It adds another constraint, right? it adds an equal constraint. And now when I select this, uh, see if I can grab the right grip here, right? Now you can see as I flex the model around a little bit that these two components are always going to be the, the same width as the uh, components over on this side. So we can really start making this model into something that's uh, a lot more intelligent. Um, show you another one real quick. Um, let's use the fixed constraint. And I'm going to say that in this model, the one point that I really care about is this bottom left-hand corner. So I'm going to add a fixed constraint into that one, so we get the little padlock there. And then, uh, you know what, I don't want this at an odd angle, I'm going to force it to be horizontal. So I'm going to go over and I'll select the horizontal constraint and I'll just pick on one of these lines. And now this has been um, set so that it's, everything is horizontal, right? So now it, the main profile is, is set, the box is aligned. Uh, everything's kind of behaving itself. And I'll show you what happens if you try to do something um, that violates a constraint. So I said that this is a fixed point. I said I want this line to be horizontal. So if I use rotate, if I can type rotate, there we go, and select everything, and I say I want to rotate this, it says, you know what, um, and it, actually this is a, a new dialogue in 2017. It says, you know what, uh, what you're trying to do, is, you can't do because you have a constraint that is preventing you from doing something. In this case, I said that this is going to be horizontal. So I can say maintain constraints and it's just going to basically exit the command. Or I can tell it to relax the constraint. It'll remove the constraint that is preventing me from doing whatever it is that I'm doing and allow me to, to rotate the model. So right now you can see that this is a, has a horizontal constraint here. If I say relax the constraint, it now allows me to rotate it and then you can see that that um, horizontal constraint has been removed. So I'm going to actually undo that because I want to leave it there. Um, so that's a little bit about what constraints can do. Let me uh, talk a little bit about these little toolbars and stuff a little bit more. Uh, the first thing is that, uh, you know what, we don't have to see those things. If you don't want them, you can just hide all the constraints. 
Um, so now it just looks like a normal AutoCAD file. Uh, but if I were to go ahead and select on a piece of the geometry, it will show me any constraints that are associated with that geometry. So this is a, another way to, to know that something has constraints associated with it. Um, again, you could delete things if you want to get rid of them, whatever. Uh, if you want to show all the constraints, you just pick show all and it will, it will show them. You can also um, show or hide just specific ones. I can say, you know what, I want to hide those and get rid of them. I don't know why you'd want to uh, show some and not others, but you can, you can do that. Uh, and then if I go back into my settings, um, you'll see that there's uh, a couple of settings down at the bottom here. And uh, these, are, these are pretty important. Um, you know, the first one is, do you want to show the constraint bar or the toolbar uh, when you're adding the constraints to objects? I have that turned on. And then you can also um, say that uh, you want to show constraints when things are selected. So if I, I'm going to cancel this for a moment, I'm going to say hide all the constraints. And again, just to, to show this, if I pick on something, you get the constraint showing up. If I go into my settings and I turn that off, I'm going to actually turn them both off, and I pick on something, now there's absolutely no indication that you have a constraint turned on um, or that these objects have a constraint. So, um, you know, you're, you're sitting there and you're trying to, to make a change and things are doing weird things. Um, it's because there's a constraint there, but it's, being, but it's hidden. So uh, if that happens, you know, you can go in and do a show all, turn them back on, or you can just tell it to display the constraints when something is selected. So even if it's hidden and I pick on it, you'll see the constraints there. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, I'll show you a couple of the other constraints that I haven't shown yet. So I'm going to go to this other drawing and I'll show a couple of the other ones. Uh, the first one I'm going to show is the tangent constraint. Actually, I want to show the, I knew there was one over on the left hand side here. Uh, I'm going to actually start with the concentric constraint. So I'm going to say that I want the circle and this arc to always be concentric with one another. Okay, so now when I uh, sit here and I um, actually, let's just grab the corner of the arc and I start playing with it, whatever I do, it's going to automatically maintain the, the uh, fact that that circle is going to stay at the center of the arc. Um, regardless of what I move or how I edit things, it's going to maintain that uh, relationship. So that's kind of neat. You could, I'm sure that you can see a lot of uh, uses for something like that, uh, especially if you're doing any kind of manufacturing type of, of parts and stuff. Um, the next one I'm going to show is tangent. So I'm going to say that I want the circle and this line to be tangent to one another. And if I were to grab the, the line and start manipulating it, you'll see that no matter what I do, that line and that circle is always going to maintain the fact that it's tangent. It doesn't matter which object I move, right? It's going to keep that edge just barely touching the line. It's actually kind of fun to play with too. If you just uh, get bored and you, you want to start uh, you know, playing with AutoCAD geometry, I know that, that you know, for the geeks in us, that, you know, that's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use the smooth constraint. And I've got a spline and I've got an arc. So if I pick the edge of the spline, the edge of the arc, it'll go ahead and uh, merge those together so it looks like it's one continuous uh, spline, if you will. Um, we can still manipulate the geometry, right? I can grab the grips and kind of change things, but it's going to maintain the best it can, that, that smooth flow between the geometry. Uh, same thing if I undo this and I use smooth between a couple of splines, Right. It's going to do the same thing. Right. It's going to go ahead and, and maintain that nice fluid um, flow between the, the, the geometry here. So I've got a, a couple of lines here at, at weird angles to one another. And uh, I want to, uh, maybe I'll see if I can add a couple of different constraints here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to use coincident again. So I'm going to say that the edge of the end of that line is going to be coincident with that one. So it adds that coincident display. I'm going to do the same thing with this line and this line. So no matter what I do now, those three lines are all going to share that same point. And then I'll use equal on these two lines so that they're the same length. And then I'll use the, the constraint that I haven't used yet, symmetrical. 
and I'm going to say that I want this one and this one to always be symmetrical with that middle point. So now when I grab the grip here, I can sit here and play all kinds of games with my uh, my line work, and no matter what I do, you know these two lines are going to be um, the same length, and they're going to be at the same relative angle to the middle line that's in the model. Um, so, you know, it's pretty powerful things that you can do with with constraints. Um, there's one thing that uh, you can do that I haven't shown yet with uh, geometric constraints, and that's uh, you can tell it AutoCAD to automatically add constraints based on what you're drawing. So if I go back into my settings, so I just pick in the little arrow again, um, I'm going to put turn on this thing called Infer Geometric Constraints. And uh, you know, one thing that I want to talk about or mention here is when it comes to constraints, less is more. Um, if you end up putting too many constraints in your model, um, not only will you start frustrating yourself because you won't be able to do things that you want to do because um, it's going to you know, maintain all these relationships, AutoCAD can also get very slow. So if you uh, are, you know, if you have 10,000 objects in your drawing and you've got a bunch of constraints and you move something and it's related to a bunch of other things, all those other things have to be adjusted and it, it can take a, a long time for AutoCAD to, to work with those. So be very careful with how many constraints you're adding. Only add them for the uh, for what you really want to use and not uh, just you know, willy-nilly. Um, so if I turn infer constraints on and uh, I'm just gonna come over here and draw a line and I'm gonna so I drew that um, vertical, and you can see, oh, I had, um, if I went back in my settings, I had a vertical turned on as something that can get at a constraint, so it automatically added a vertical constraint. I'm going to say that I want to take this line, and I want to draw it perpendicular to this other one. So it automatically got a perpendicular constraint. And if I were to try to stretch something, right, it's, it's not letting me change the angle of this because it's forced to horizontal, right? This, or this one's first to ver forced to vertical, I guess I should say. Um, if I want to get rid of something, I just hit delete. And now I can sit here and grab a, you know, drag the grip and adjust it. So it, it's basically just going to add a, any constraint that, uh, that you're telling it, telling AutoCAD that you want to associate with. Um, if I said, you know, a line was, a, I drew a circle and I moved it tangent to something, it's going to add the tangent constraint, etc. So um, that's a little bit about um, the uh, geometric constraints. Um, talked about show and hide and all of that. Um, are there any questions that you want to cover right now before I moved on to uh, dimensional constraints? Victoria, do you have any? You want to share? Mm, I guess not. So I'll just move on from there, and uh, we'll take uh, additional questions at the end here. Um, so the next thing I want to show is a, a little bit about um, the dimensional constraints. So I have a little model here of a couple of, you know, maybe a lever or you know, a piece of bar or something, uh, and if I pick on it, you'll see that I've already associated some geometric constraints with this. And now what I want to start doing is applying, um, I don't know if I said geometric, but I, I apply geometric constraints. Now I want to start applying some dimensional constraints. So dimensional constraints are, are you know, if you want to think of them as smart dimensions, I guess that's one way to think of it. So we can add uh, align constraints. We can add radius and diameter and angular constraints, and we can even convert a uh, dimensional constraint into a, a real dimension if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and start making this model even smarter than it was before, right? Uh, right now, if I uh, grab a grip and I, I you know, move something, you know, you can, you know, geometry moves accordingly, but I want to actually start adding some true intelligence into this. So I'm going to start by using an align constraint, and this is just like a dimension. I'm just going to pick a two points and I'm going to select a location for the constraint, and it 
just created something, um, it, it will automatically prefix this with the type of constraint. So this is a, a distance constraint. And it will tell me what the value is. So this is four units long. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So grab a couple of points here and say that, you know what, this is distance two and it's five units long. Uh, we can add in a diameter constraint. I'm going to just go ahead and select the location for that, and that'll uh, list as DIA1. Uh, let's add in a radius constraint <coughs> over here, so that's radius1, and then I'll also add an angular constraint. Let's grab that, so that becomes an angle. So, so that's kind of neat, right? Um, and we've got all this information here. We can uh, go ahead and actually edit things just by double clicking on it. So I can say, you know what, I really want this one to be called arm1 instead. And uh, maybe I want this to be you know, three units long. And I can start manipulating the, the length of things. Right, so we can start doing that. Um, but there's actually a, a more uh, or a better way to deal with all of this, and that's using this thing called the Parameters Manager. So in the Parameters Manager, um, we can do all the things that uh, that I can do in the model. Uh, so I've got di or uh, d2. I'm going to say that this is arm2 instead. Right, because I can rename that. I can change the value of things and say this is six units long whatever. Um, but we can also start uh, maybe adding some more inf more um, relationships and more intelligence to things. So instead of DIA1, I'm going to say that this is really my whole diameter. And uh, I'm going to create an additional parameter. Um, actually, I want, yeah, let's do this first. Um, so in, right now, I'm just using explicit values. So I have arm1 set to three units and arm2 set to six units. Instead of doing that, I'm going to say arm2 is actually going to be arm1 uh, and I'm going to say times. So the symbol for the multiplication in AutoCAD is the asterisk. So asterisk 1.5. So that automatically will change this. So whatever I say arm1 is, if I say this is four units long, arm2 is going to change to be one and a half times, so it's going to be six units long. So we, we, can, we don't have to just use an explicit value. Basically, we can use some, you know, some simple formulas in here and control how things are working. Um, we can also add parameters that, uh, that you haven't used at all in the model. So I can add a, what we call a user parameter. And um, I'm going to call this my... Uh, bolt diameter. Actually, I'm going to use lowercase just so I don't get confused. And I'm going to say that the bolt diameter is 0.25 units. And now uh, for the hole diameter, I'm going to say that that is actually going to be bolt diameter. If I can hit the right key here. And I'm going to say I want it to be whatever the bolt diameter is plus um, 0.25. So now if I come over here and I say that this is going to be 0.4 units long. Uh, whoops. Oh, I did that in the wrong spot. Sorry about that. Let me undo that. I want to change the radius. So this is going to be bolt diameter. plus 0.25. All right, so if I change this to 0.4, now the radius is changing accordingly so that it's always going to maintain that relationship with the model. Uh, we can even change the angle, say this want this to be 140 degrees, etc. So um, we can really create intelligent um, relationships between um, the geometry and other geometry that's in this file. Um, I mentioned that we can also control some, some, you know, how these things display. If I go into my settings here for 
uh, well, first of all, before I go into that, we have the same kind of things, right? So I can hide all of the dimension or all of the parameters, the dimensional parameters. We can show them all. Um, you can turn on individual ones. You could right click uh, and get rid of one if you need to or, or delete it. Um, we can also go into the settings here. So by the way, if you notice, when I went into the settings from geometric, it automatically brings the geometric pan or tab forward. If I come from the dimensional side, it brings the dimensional tab forward. Um, but we can control how these parameters are displaying. So right now I'm displaying the name and expression. So I get the angle one and the value. Uh, if you want, you can just show the name. So I hit that and now I just have arm one, arm two, hole diameter, etc. Uh, if you don't like that, you can say, I just want to see the value. And now I've got four and six, et cetera. Um, so, you know, you can determine how you want to th display things. Um, if I pick on a, uh, one of these parameters and I go into my property palette, right now, all of these, these parameters, re regardless of what they are, whether they're geometric or dimensional, um, they don't plot or, or show up any, in any way other than on the screen that, as you're seeing it here. Uh, if you actually wanted this to be a, a real dimension, we can just uh, select on it, and I can change this from a dynamic parameter to an annotational parameter. And it'll um, go ahead and do that, and maybe I'll just adjust the, the location of this here. So I want that to be six units long. So now this is a real dimension, right? So this will this will plot. Um, it'll show up in everything there. But if I were to go into ARM1 and say that this is three units long, you'll see that it's still automatically updating. So that dimensional parameter is still there. It's still just as smart. But now I have something that actually will plot and instead of just uh, you know, um, displaying when, as things are selected. Um, okay, so uh, so this so far everything that I've done uh, is only available in AutoCAD. So for those of you that are using AutoCAD LT, uh, you can't add parameters and you can't uh, you know add or you can't add geometric or dimensional parameters. But what I will do is I will show you uh, what you can do in AutoCAD LT. So I'm going to jump over to LT now. And uh, you'll see in AutoCAD LT that we do have a parameter panel. Um, if I jump back to AutoCAD, you'll see here we've got you know a panel uh, to add constraints for geometric constraints as well as to show hide uh, settings. Same thing with dimensional. Over in LT, all we have is the show hide stuff. So you can't add a, a parameter or um, you know, uh, anything like that. Um, but the model actually is still just as smart. Uh, one thing about parameters is uh, if you get a model from somebody and you don't know that, that somebody used these constraints um, and I select on a model, it looks just like a standard AutoCAD file, right? Um, so I, I go in here not knowing what I got, and I uh, come in and I say, you know, I really want to change the diameter of the circle, and I'm trying to change it, and nothing's happening, right? Um, if I move it, um, I can move it, but it's moving the whole part. It's not moving just the circle. Same thing over here. I can change the, um, maybe I try and change the width of that, and it won't let me. Excuse me. So, um, so if you get a part like this, um, first of all, um, you know, use the tricks that I show I showed earlier. Uh, we can hit show all and see that there are parameters associated with something. Um, if you want to get rid of one, you could right click and delete a parameter. But probably the simplest thing to do if you don't care about this being a smart part is just use delete constraints and just type in all and get rid of all the constraints. So now I can just start working with this like just like anything else. Um, one thing I want to show though is that uh, you know this does have the parameter manager and stuff. So I can sit here and I can change the length of things. This works just like AutoCAD as far as what's there. I just can't add a new parameter. 
right? Everything, uh, or, or new constraint, uh, everything that's there works, but you, you can't add your own. So uh, hopefully that uh, makes sense to everybody. And uh, let's go ahead and start taking some questions. I left plenty of time for questions because I think that there would be a bunch. So what do we have, uh, Victoria or Ashley? Yeah, Dave, we have a couple of questions here. So um, if you use smooth between two arcs, will the two arcs stay tangent to one another? All right, so let's uh, jump back to AutoCAD. I don't really know what the answer is, so let's uh, <laughs> let's just give it a try. So let's use smooth, and we'll grab these. Uh, so one, one, at least one has to be a spline, I guess. Okay, so you can't do it just between two arcs. Uh, one object at least has to be a spline in order for the the smooth to work. All right, so another question that we have is, um, could you show the adding table for various size option, like structure beam block? Um, I think that's probably more about a, a parametric um, block as opposed to just using uh, constraints. So there's nothing like that just in the constraint side. And I'm, um, that, you know, that's a little bit beyond what we're showing here. And, in this particular presentation. So that'd be one under uh, you know, presentation for parametric parts or parametric blocks or dynamic blocks. Doesn't look like we have any other um, questions. Uh, I, I do see, um, I see at least one more here that I, I thought would be helpful to have answered out loud, Dave. Um, okay. Do constraints work in 3D? So do they work with 3D objects versus just 2D drafting? I'm uh, that's fairly, a good question. <laughs> um, I'm fairly I don't think the answer so. is no. I've, I've been searching for it behind the scenes here, and I, as far as I can tell, the answer is no. Um, but there seems to be some interest in it. But maybe uh, you want to test it out on, on some simple, like a simple box or something? We can try it together. Yeah. Let's see. So let's do. Uh, I'm just going to copy this box over, and uh, let's just try uh, using a fixed constraint. Nope. So it's saying to select a line, a polyline, a circle, an arc, an ellipse, or a spline. So uh, it won't allow you to select a, any kind of 3D geometry. So no, it doesn't work with uh, 3D stuff. But good question. Dave, another question that we have here is, if you have an object with constraints and you copy it, when you change a constraint, will both change? Uh, I don't think so. I think if you have an object with constraints, so this one has a, a bunch of constraints, right? So if I copy this over here and I stretch this one, right? It's just uh, it's just doing this. So this the the constraints on this object are not the same as this one. Um, you know, the, the relationship between this line and this line is the same as the relationship between this line and that one, but um, modifying this does not modify that. Does that make sense? But another good question. Okay, what else do we have? Will these constraints carry over when they're inserted into Inventor? <laughs> um, I would be willing to bet that the answer is no. Um, I don't think that uh, constraints from AutoCAD will pass to Inventor. Um, but I don't have Inventor installed, so I couldn't try that. Um, and Inventor's constraints, I think, work a little bit differently than AutoCAD's, if I recall correctly. Um, don't hold yeah, it up, but I, I think they do work a little 
a little differently. And I think there are, I, I don't think there's a one-to-one -one relationship either. I think an inventor has constraints that AutoCAD does not. And, um, but uh, it, it would be nice and hope maybe in the future that will happen. So if you use the explode command, will the, will the constraints go away? Uh, no, um, because like if you can't uh, explode a line, a line is as low as you can get. Um, if you were to explode a polyline, maybe. So this is a polyline. Yeah, so that so exploding a polyline will get rid of the constraints, but you can't really explode a line or an arc. Um, so it it just be with with the polyline because when you explode a polyline. Um, I now have four entities instead of one entity, so you know um, those constraints disappear. But uh, but that's so it's a yes no. <laughs> Here's another interesting uh, 3D one. If um, if we can go back for a second, could you try this, uh, Dave? If you put constraints on a rectangle and then extrude it, what happens to the constraints? Uh, so it, it removed the constraints when I extruded it. So same thing. It's it's now no longer a polyline. Now it's a box. So same kind of thing. Okay. So but, they uh, just they good, just good, at good that point. Trying to trying to work around the uh, will it work with 3D thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a couple of sharp customers uh, in the uh, in the chat window here trying to figure out whether or not it would. Uh, work on extruded yeah. geometry and not just primitives. That's, that's clever. Yeah, and there's I nothing in, I don't think, in the uh, in the 3D tools, right? There's nothing, no kind of constraints here that I can remember. Not that I'm aware of. Um, I haven't found anything. So I'm, I'm like 90% sure there's nothing there, but I will, uh, I can look it up after the webinar. Yeah. Dave, can you use constraints with dynamic blocks? So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, dynamic blocks, um, it may not, I don't, I, I haven't played around with uh, dynamic blocks enough as far as, you know, building my own and stuff, but there are very similar types of things you can do in a dynamic block. Um, and I think as long as it's 2D geometry that you should be able to use it within the block. Um, but there, there are lots of other things you can do with dynamic blocks, but like, you know, setting increment values and using tables and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to use a constraint, like you know, a concentric constraint on something. So, you know, as I change the diameter of a circle, the uh, another circle will change accordingly. Um, pretty sure that would work. Yeah, Dave, I can actually speak to that a little bit. Um, we did a yeah. webinar a couple weeks ago about dynamic blocks. Um, and we didn't actually get into the geometric constraints, but if you open up the dynamic block editor, and then you open up the block authoring palettes, there are four different tabs. One of them is parameters, one's actions, and then the third one is, oh, what am I looking for? Uh, parameter sets, and then the fourth one is actually constraints. So there's a whole palette just dedicated to constraints within uh, dynamic blocks. And if that's of interest to people, maybe that's a, a future topic that we could cover is uh, constraints within dynamic blocks. Yeah. If you, uh, actually, if you open up the block editor, it might be um, better to show it on screen. Um, just create, just create, the block? Uh, just create a quick <laughs> test, create a quick test block and then check the box for open uh, yeah, open in block editor down the left-hand corner. Uh, open, yep, okay, or just double-click it. Yeah. There we go. See the constraints? So all of yeah, these are available. Like the, yeah, it looks like the whole list of them. Yep. Yeah. All right. 
What else? Looks like from a technical side, we've we've pretty much covered everything. Okay. I'm uh, surprised. I thought there would be uh, lots of questions, but we, we did have a lot of people that used constraints already, so that makes sense. There, are, there are still a few questions trickling in, Dave. If you want to take a quick look, um, let's see. I'm starting to lose track of which ones we've answered. Uh, let's see. The last one here. Um, why are reference objects sometimes uh, the one that moves? Well, it's the constrained object that should move. Um, that's a good question. Um, and actually, so when I when I converted or told this you know shape here to be horizontal, um, it actually maybe did some things that maybe you wouldn't you know um, expect it to do. So one thing about constraints is. Uh, you know, you only tell AutoCAD so much about something. Um, you know, if I if I stretch this, well, actually, I, I turned that other thing into a block already, um, so I have to undo that. But there we go. So when I stretch this object, right, um, it's it's stretching things. But depending on what you do, you, you're not always going to get the the thing that you would expect it to do. Um, you know, when I'm stretching this, you know, it, it's it's also changing my arcs and, and all that kind of stuff. It, it basically depends on how much of a relationship you have. In this case, this point is fixed, so that can't move. Um, but if I were to, you know, move uh, something else, you know, if I were to move this, right, it's going to try to maintain the, the relationship best it can. Um, as far as you know, the the logic behind the scenes, I don't know if I could answer that because I you know don't know how the code works. But uh, you know, if you want something to to stay put, you know, you can always just add a fixed constraint to it. Just remember, less is more. Don't add too many constraints to your model. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, can you uh, can you constrain nested objects, uh, maybe XREFs or blocks, um, groups? I don't think so because like um, when I, as I tried when I selected the E3D thing, it said select a line, polyline, arc, etc. So I don't think it'll allow you to select anything like an XREF or block. Right, so you couldn't necessarily constrain blocks in relation to each other or uh, XREFs in relation to blocks or other entities in the drawing? Yeah, not that I can think of a way to do that now. And just looking to see uh, what we have. So I guess we can take uh, you know, one, one one or two more questions if anybody has one, and then we'll finish up with the last poll on the uh, summary stuff here. Anybody have a question that merits a piece of Autodesk uh, merchandise? <laughs> Okay. I see a couple right. nice ones in here, Dave, but let's see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me uh, run the final poll, and then uh, we'll, we'll um, go ahead and, and finish the last couple of slides and see if there are any other questions before we go in. Uh, so let's see. Launch. <clears throat> All right, so the last poll that we have today is, did you learn something new in today's webinar? And this is great because uh, even with 72% voted, uh, looks like we have 100%. 400, that's great. 
<laughs> okay, that's great. So um, let me go ahead and jump back to the PowerPoint. Can you see the PowerPoint okay? Yep, we can see it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and run through the last couple of slides, Ashley. Yep, sure. So um, we have uh, some additional resources, um, links, um, if you're not using AutoCAD 2017 and you want to have a trial download or LT 2017, um, you can do that. We also have um, hot fixes available, so um, please take a look at that. And uh, yeah, One thing I, I will mention is um, the hot fix 3 for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT 2017. Um, has a, a fix in it for migrating custom settings, uh, which was uh, um, sometimes problematic when you tried to do it with the out-of-the-box version of the software. So uh, if you are trying to use 2017 and having a problem migrating settings from a previous release, uh, make sure you have Hotfix 3 installed and, and that should work much better for you. And. And again, thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to, um, to join us. Um, if We always welcome feedback or any questions, so um, please feel free to, to send us your ideas or feedback or any kind of webinar topic you'd like to see covered. We're always happy to get your feedback. So you can email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com and in the subject line put build your AutoCAD IQ. Okay. And uh, let's see, do we have any last questions before we uh, call it a, a webinar? We do. We actually have a, a few more, some nice ones that, um, that came in here. So one of the questions is, when you copy an object with constraints and paste it into another drawing, do the constraints follow along? Yeah, I think that uh, just like when I copied the uh, geometry from one one point in the drawing to another point in the drawing, um, copying it to another drawing would be the same thing. So it would create a you know a, a copy of the, all of the geometry and all of the constraints and bring it across. Great. Um, yeah. I don't see any other technical questions. We have a few others, but Victoria looks like she's responding to those. So I yeah. think we're all set. All right. And uh, again, thank you all for, for attending and uh, hope we'll see you back at a future webinar. And Ashley and I will be back in two weeks when we cover the AutoCAD MEP, what's our introduction to AutoCAD MEP. So hope to see lots of people then. Uh, thanks and have a great day. Thank you. Take care.